Hey there guys, welcome to another video and today I'm going to show you how to install a TKG PDS kernel for your specific CPU. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up terminal because we are going to need to edit a few things. And just so you guys can see what I'm doing, I am going to just enlarge the hell out of this uh, to make it more viewable for you. So I'm going to do sudo gedit slash etc, my bad, pacman.com. And we're going to scroll right to the bottom. And of course, I am going to can I even enlarge this view. And I can't. All right. So I'm going to go right to the bottom. And you're going to see this. I will put this repo in the description below. And that way you'll be able to find it and just copy and paste it in. Uh, these repos are going to have the TKG PDS kernel already pre-compiled and ready for your system. And I figured this would probably be the easiest way to show you how to do it instead of you having to compile and wait forever to be done. And uh, this works best with Grub. You can use it with system MD boot, but you have to move around the kernel manually. And I switched to Grub because I got tired of doing that. So what next? What do we do next? Well, after you're done adding the repo, do, do remember to hit the save button, okay? And we're going to update the server list. So we're going to do uh, SY instead of anything else. And the chaotic AR is now up to date. Now you're going to want to have something that deals with the AUR. I am not sure if I can actually do it this way. Let me let me give it a shot. Ready? Linux slash TKG. Uh, little thingy one second pds as well oh it lets me just do it from here now that's cool that removes the need for yay yay is an application that handles aur packages so you'll be able to just install it from pacman and have it go and i'm gonna just hit yes so you know what happens i already have this installed and then we're gonna edit the grub config and I'm gonna show you why. And it's gonna go, it's gonna do what it needs to. All right, it's gonna add it in, go through all the file systems, does everything that it normally needs to do. It's gonna build the fallback, which is great. And after all that's done, we're going to CD into the root. And we're gonna go into grub here. We're gonna list what's there. And we need to edit the grub.config. You don't need to, but you can. You could use the advanced section and boot from the kernel. Or you can have it boot by default. So it's just a straight up go. And I like having a straight up go. So you can need sudo for this. Gedit. And grub.config. So here we are. And what I did is I added an entry. This entry right here is to just instantly boot. This is my first kernel select. So when the bootloader comes up and you hit enter or you just let it go automatically, it's good to go. All right. And I have a sub menu also in advanced for it. And of course, I also have my fallback just in case I need that. So everything is set up the way it needs to be. So this is what you'll normally get. This menu entry and all of this will be up here, but I just copied it and I edited it and we're going to actually do that in a new window. So here's what I did. Uh, this is going to be fun. So dot TKG, I'm sorry, I keep saying key, my bad. And uh, it's not dot, it's actually that EDS as well all right now you're not going to be using the haswell kernel if you don't have haswell but after this you can just sort of copy this and you can sort of just paste it along so right here we're going to paste that and as for right here well we're going to paste that and then then you're done in that point right and then you got the fallback so with the fallback i don't remember what i did for the fallback but i did open up a new window fallback's kind of different so let me just so I have to put it before, got it. So again, 
um, fallback, done, and uh, loading Linux, paste it in there, and we're going to just copy over this, and we're going to hit paste, because that way it just, oh, doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Okay, so right here, and then hit paste. Yeah, that looks correct. All right. So we have the initial RAM disk, and that's done. Uh, the kernel is done. That's done. Great. And that's it. We're finished with that entry. So as I told you, you want to move this new entry up to the top above those original entries, and that way your first kernel that you'll boot is the PDS kernel. And uh, now we have to talk about NVIDIA in case you have NVIDIA. And that's not really something I like doing. So we're just going to stop all of that. And what I am going to do is we're going to install an NVIDIA driver, one meant for custom kernels. So it's NVIDIA uh, DKMS. And that's going to install the driver you need to be able to boot this custom kernel. The only thing you have to replace. And after that, what we're going to need to do is initiate the grub rebuild command. So let me just grab that command and we'll be right back. So as soup, that means root, you're going to paste in this command, which is just going to go and rebuild everything. So it's found the Haswell kernel. Uh, it's found my original kernel. Uh, it's got both entries and you're good to go. Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. Um, I, I got the audio for my mic sounding okay on Linux. I hope it's suitable. I hope you heard everything I said. And uh, if you're wondering what the difference between the two kernels is, well, this one's meant for just pure speed. Uh, it helps in gaming. It helps you when you have CMU and NVIDIA. Uh, it even helps in Yuzu to get better performance. I mean, I can jump over uh, to Discord here real quick and I can show you two images if need be okay these two images are going to be simple one is going to be from windows and the fps at the bottom is 42. now the jump isn't that much because i was using vulcan and if you know anything about vulcan opengl performs better fps wise than vulcan does so i lost a little bit but i did gain nonetheless and we're at 47 fps when you're playing a game like smash any gain in fps is good enough when we're using opengl I will have 50 FPS. Not all the time, but it's good enough that it's a speedy gameplay. So you'll get better FPS in games. You'll get a better FPS in emulators. It makes Rayojinx usable for NVIDIA users on Linux, and you will have a much better time. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you found this useful and you enjoy the speed boost, hit that like button. If you're new here and you want more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.